Hello, my name is Matthew Hunter with Legacy Wilderness Academy, and I'm on a mission to document every edible and medicinal plant in the southeastern U.S. so Southerners can have greater access to nutritious food and free medicine. In today's video, we're going to be looking at one of the most important medicinal plants in North America. It's an excellent remedy for coughs, cold, and flu. It's an antiviral and immune system stimulant plant. It's called Boneset. In this video, I'll show you how to identify bone set. We'll look at where it grows, talk about its medicinal uses, and then I'll show you how to prepare it into an herbal cough syrup. Stay tuned. Before we begin, I'll quickly mention that if you want to learn more about the useful plants growing in our region, make sure that after this video, you download my free guide to medicinal plants of the Southeast, which you can find in the link in the description below this video. In Mrs. Greaves' Modern Herbal, originally published in 1931, she wrote that there is probably no other plant in American domestic practice that has been used as extensively and as frequently as boneset. So this is a plant that the knowledge of it was passed down from Native Americans to early American settlers, and it was harvested extensively uh, in this country in times past. So it's really on the same level as a plant like echinacea or elderberry in its ability to stimulate the immune system and fight off viral infections. However, uh, this one doesn't really have as much widespread sort of knowledge. It's, it's fallen out of tradition and the only people who really use it today are herbalists. So in this video, I really wanna share it with you so that more of the common folks living in the Eastern US can start to use it. So let's start with learning how to identify boneset. Boneset is a plant that can grow Three or four feet tall, and the flowers are really pretty. Like Georgia just said, boneset is an herb that grows to about three or four feet tall. You can see what the flowers look like here. They appear around the month of July and will flower all throughout the late summer and fall. Uh, whenever they open up, they actually don't have any petals. So you can see the ones that are open just have the little stamens sticking out. Perhaps the most distinct part of the plant are the leaves, which you can see here. They are oppositely arranged, and the stem pokes right through. You can see how the leaves are actually connected on both sides where they come around. And so the stem pokes right through. And this is where the plant gets its scientific name, Eupatorium perfoliatum. And so in botany, whenever the leaves wrap all the way around the stem like that, we call that a perfoliate leaf. And so this plant is very easy to recognize by the leaves. You can also see the vein pattern, and it's also a really hairy plant. The leaves, especially on the undersides, are really hairy. And you can see there, uh, this is broken off, but you can see the, the hairy stem there. So that's how to identify bone set, a very simple, a straightforward plant to identify. So the part of bone set that we're gonna use are the leaves and the flowers. Some herbalists say that the flowers tops themselves are the strongest, but the leaves or flowers can be used. And this plant grows throughout the whole Eastern US. I mean, really like the whole Eastern half of the country other than the Southern half of Florida. So sorry, Floridians, but as you guys know, a lot of plants don't really grow in South Florida that grow in the rest of the US because it's too tropical. Um, so next, let's talk about the medicinal uses of bone set. So first and foremost, bone set should be thought of as an antiviral and immune system stimulating herb. It has been used for a very long time in the treatment of coughs, colds, flu, and fever. And scientific studies have shown its effectiveness at stimulating the immune system and helping the body to fight off viruses. So where did the name bone set come from? There's a couple different ideas of where it came from. One camp says that it came from the fact that it was used to treat dengue fever, which is also known as breakbone fever. Another camp says that it's because Native Americans used it to actually heal broken bones. So first, let's explore the sort of breakbone fever idea. This plant was used to treat dengue fever and breakbone fever. One of the main symptoms of that disease is achy and sore muscles and obviously fever. So boneset is a pain relieving plant. It's gonna help whenever you feel really achy and sore, uh, whenever you're sick. And studies have shown that it's sort of similar or maybe even more effective than aspirin as a pain reliever in these sort of circumstances. It's also really good for relieving the pain of a cough. And as um, an antispasmodic, it can help reduce the sort of spasms uh, that make you feel like you wanna cough. So it can help not only relieve the pain of a cough, but also reduce the cough reflex a little bit. So this plant has been used widely in the treatment of fevers. If you drink a hot cup of boneset tea, go lay down in bed, cover yourself up, uh, up with some blankets. It's gonna stimulate sweating and open up your sort of eliminative channels and help um, your body sort of fight off the infection and also reduce a fever. So an excellent plant 
for, um, for coughs, cold, and flu. So the second school of thought is that boneset got its name from the fact that Native Americans use this plant to help heal broken bones. And in fact, the herbalist Matthew Wood argues that in some Native American languages, their name for boneset actually means to heal or to mend broken bones. And so uh, some herbalists in the modern day actually have had great success using boneset to help heal broken bones, similar to the way that herbalists use comfrey, okay? And so how would this work? Well, whenever your bone breaks, it sends out chemical signals to basically help draw the bones back together. And Matthew Wood um, says that uh, most likely what's happening is that bone set is helping to stimulate those chemical signals. And uh, so, yeah, he says that multiple uh, herbalists have had great success using it similar to comfrey, but Matthew Wood says that it's actually more effective than comfrey in healing broken bones. And of course, I've never used it for this myself, but it is one that I would run to in sort of a post-disaster austere type situation where no higher medical care was available. And I would wanna use a, a poultice directly on the skin, maybe take it internally as well, although I'm not quite sure if internal use would do anything, but I believe that is how comfrey is used internally and externally. So that's how I would apply bone set personally. But really the way I've used this plant is as an excellent cough medicine and uh, we're going to be using it for cold and flu so next let's look at how to make a cough syrup we're going to be harvesting a couple other plants and i already have some dried bone set at home that we'll be using so uh, let's go back to the kitchen so one of the plants we're going to be harvesting is sweet gum we're going to be harvesting the leaves sweet gum is a plant that has really been used a lot in coughs i actually have a whole video talking about the medicinal uses of sweet gum how to harvest it how to, to prepare it so Georgia's gonna look for some leaves that look really nice. And like this one? yeah, that one looks good. And we're gonna be taking these back to the, to the kitchen to uh, add to our syrup. The next plant I'll be using is wild cherry, which is actually a tree that grows right in my backyard. It is probably along with bone set, one of the plants that's been harvested the most historically by just like everyday people. Uh, it is, the reason that cough drops are cherry flavored and cough syrups are cherry flavored, and in fact, some cough syrups still use wild cherry, uh, but uh, so this is gonna be going in our cough syrup as well. It's gonna be a really, really good at reducing the pain of a cough, sort of a good cough um, sedative, you could say. Lastly, with any cough syrup, we're gonna want a plant that's rich in mucilage to act as a demulcent or a plant that soothes inflamed tissues. Normally here you would use something like mullein. I don't have any mullein today, but I do have some sassafras leaves which are really high in mucilage. They, um, whenever you uh, rehydrate them, they get really slimy and this is gonna act as sort of a soothing base for our cough syrup. All right, so here's all we need to make syrup. We have our bone set, our sassafras leaves, our wild cherry bark, and our fresh sweet gum leaves. And we're gonna be making one pint of syrup. And so the way you do this is you make a really, really strong tea or decoction, and you fill it halfway up, and then the other half is gonna be honey. So here we have some local honey, and the honey acts as a preservative. It's also gonna sweeten the taste of the bone set, which is a real bitter herb. And you guys are gonna hate the way I do this, but I actually don't do um, precise measurements. What we know is that all we're gonna really need is one half pint of water, and then some of it's gonna boil out throughout the, the process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil, I have here a pint and a half of water, so three times the amount that we need in the final product. That's gonna account for some of this being absorbed, some of it being evaporated. And we're gonna put, we just wanna make it like as strong as possible. So I'm gonna put my sweet gum leaves in, and then I'm gonna put the bone set in, and I'm gonna be boiling this, see how, how much there is, it's like gonna be really, really strong, because we're only gonna be taking like spoonfuls of the syrup. And then um, normally, you know, you could boil them all together if you wanted to, however, wild cherry bark, uh, it has an active constituent in it called prussic acid, which is destroyed by high heat. And then the sassafras has mucilage in it, which heat's not gonna hurt it, but it extracts better in like cold or room temperature water rather than the hot water. We could boil the sassafras leaves, it wouldn't hurt, but to make it a little bit more effective, we're gonna boil these first, and then we're going to infuse these once this cools down. So let me show you how we do that. We're gonna go ahead and boil this for 15 minutes. All right, now we boiled our tea and it's cooled down where it's just a little warm. And we uh, went ahead and chromoled up the sassafras into a powder. 
by hand just to make it you know extract a little bit better go ahead and throw that in I also shredded up our cherry bark I took a little bit out because I thought it was just a little bit too much and uh, I shredded it up so go ahead and put that in and now we're gonna make an infusion okay a decoction is when you boil a plant an infusion is when you let a plant sit um, either in hot water or a cold infusion is when you do room temperature water now you can let this sit anywhere from one hour two hours I mean really the longer you let it sit the better two hours would probably be recommended so we're gonna let this sit for a while and infuse into the water and then I'll show you what to do next all right now that this has been infusing for a while the uh, sassafras has given it a really thick um, sort of slimy consistency hopefully you can see it they're kind of dripping off uh, so it's about ready and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this jar about halfway up we might go a little bit less than halfway and I'll show you why here in a second but I'll go ahead and take out my almond milk bag which we're gonna strain it through all right and uh, well I may have to pour a tiny bit out but next we're gonna add the honey so we'll match the amount of honey 50 50 you can also use uh, white sugar and of course we'll give that a stir and now we're pretty much done okay so uh, something like this once we stir it up uh, will last in the fridge for I guess at least a few months uh, now the last thing I am gonna put in here is I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of alcohol and that alcohol whenever you use uh, just a little bit I think you know maybe 20% of the jar alcohol I have actually ever clear so we probably need 10% of the jar you could use any type of, of you know alcohol you could use brandy whiskey vodka shoot you could even use tequila if you wanted to um, and that's gonna uh, help with the preservation and I have made syrups like this with a little bit of alcohol in it I've used it you know a whole year after making it in the fridge and it's gonna last for you all right so here uh, I have another syrup that I made the other day almost the exact same way you can see I put elderberries in this one so it has some nice color this one does not have alcohol in it um, and Georgia actually just got over a cough she still got some congestion so the way you would dose this is for um, an adult you could do two tablespoons a few times throughout the day for a child you do maybe like one tablespoon for someone maybe you know even younger one or two years old then you could just do um, about a teaspoon or maybe work your way up to one or two teaspoons depending and we just used this particular syrup uh, half of it I gave away and I actually made this because some friends of mine told me that they knew someone that came back from um, Nicaragua uh, as missionaries and some of their kids actually had whooping cough and brought it back with them and so the uh, one-year-old in the family was not able to sleep for more than like 45 minutes at a time this was just like a couple weeks ago and after giving them this syrup uh, they got back to my wife and said that the one-year-old was able to sleep for five hours without waking up and before it was only 45 minutes so it's a very effective cough medicine for reducing the pain of a cough reducing the sort of cough reflex um, really good and by the way bone set you can also just use by itself in a tea or as a tincture and keep in mind that bone set one thing I sort of haven't really mentioned too much mom say to keep the tablecloth clean yeah I'm about to get in trouble for that um, no it's just a little accident okay we'll have to clean it up after this um, bone set is like super bitter it's like when you make a tea like you only need a tiny little bit um, in my experience because it's very very bitter tastes like soap maybe that's one of the reasons it sort of fell out of use because of how bad it tastes um, but it's like one of the most bitter herbs that I know of probably the most bitter herb I, I know of Dad, can um, I have another? no that's all all right baby let me finish this video out so guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video on bone set again my name is Matthew Hunter with Legacy Wilderness Academy and if you want to you, um, learn more about some of the plants we use in this video I also have a video on sweet gum and uh, on sassafras as well and make sure if you want to learn more about medicinal plants of the southeast you check out my free guide to medicinal plants which you can find in the link in the description below this video bye bone set is an herb that can grow it's about three or four feet tall
be or four feet tall. Or it could do like five. Uh, Dad, look up there. 